The whole world knows the United States is gonna enter a recession soon, right? I mean, housing sales are down, factory production is down. The yield curve is the most inverted it's been since 1981. And even venerable tech giants are laying off their employees. I mean, a recession has to be around the corner, right? Maybe, but maybe not. Consumers keep spending and employers keep hiring. In fact, if you look at, at some very discretionary spending areas of the economy, restaurants, bars, hotels, you see help wanted signs in all of those businesses now, right? They can't hire enough people to keep up with demand. So maybe we're not gonna have a recession. And I point out both sides of the coin on this because the truth is we don't know. Nobody knows, right? Somebody can come on the news and, 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 and share some very thoughtful points and you'll think, yeah, of course the United States is gonna enter a recession and I'd be a fool not to take some chips off the table. And then somebody else comes on the news and, and gives an equally convincing case as to wh why the United States is not gonna enter a recession. You know, so what do you do? What, how are you supposed to play this? And, you know, I just wanna point out how difficult these things are. It's always perfectly clear in hindsight and you can look back and say, ah, oh, why didn't I take some chips off the table before the recession? I, I knew that this was coming. Well, maybe it is and maybe it isn't. And remember, not only do you have to figure out what's gonna happen with the US economy, but you also have to figure out how the stock market's gonna react to it. Maybe a recession is already priced in. And if it looks like it's gonna be a mild recession, Maybe the stock market goes up, right? There's always these situations. Not only do you have to figure out what's going to happen, but how the stock market is going to react. So when's the stock market going to crash to get to the title of, 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 uh, of this video? The honest answer is nobody knows. And you know what? It might not crash, right? And I don't think it's a coin toss one way or the other. Um, Personally, although what do I know? I don't have a crystal ball. Personally, I think the U.S. is going to enter a mild recession. And as long as, as, long as people have their jobs, now part of the, the official definition of a recession, it includes an increase of unemployment. It includes people losing their jobs, right? An increase in the amount of people losing their jobs. Now, the, the, text, the, the public definition of a recession is two quarters of negative GDP growth. But there's actually a third party uh, that looks at a plethora of data. And then in hindsight, maybe six months, a year later, 18 months later said, oh, you know what? The United States was in a recession, but you know, that doesn't do anybody any good. So let me see if through this video, I can do you some good and I can talk about what you should do if you think a recession is coming and what you should do if you think a recession is not coming, right? And how do you protect yourself during this period of time? And even better, you know, how do you, how do you benefit? Is there a way to benefit from, from this right now? Um, and, and the answer to both of those is not that exciting. And, and my advice, though I don't know your specific situation, but in general, my advice to people is to not try to time the market, that it is time in the market, not timing the market. And one of the reasons when the stock market crashes, it can be so painful as you look back and you think, oh, it was so obvious. Why didn't I make this change? But you know what? It's not so obvious. And that's what I want to point out, which is why I think most people are going to do much better by having a long term asset allocation. How much your money is in stocks, how much of your money is in bonds, right? You want to have high quality, short duration bonds to help buffer the volatility of your portfolio. And, and the older you get and the fewer years you have to make up for losses, or if you've already retired and, and you're no longer able to make up for losses, then you probably want to have less volatility. Again, this isn't financial advice. This is information for you to consider 
and to do your own research on, or even better yet, in my opinion, and admittedly I'm biased, work with a fee-only financial advisor. And you can find one just by Googling that term. But figure out what your long-term asset allocation is. Um, and then do what you can to stick to it because where people get hurt is, is when they get scared and they become, because of their emotions, because of their heart, and because of the anxiety uh, that their brain is putting them through, they become forced sellers in a down market, right? You could have two, three, 10 years worth of living expenses in something that's stable and secure, right? Short-term treasuries, cash at your bank. But if the stress of the stock market going down causes you concern, if you think about it, let's say you've saved up a half a million dollars um, just for easy math, and let's say your portfolio is down 30%. I'm just making up numbers here. That's a, in this case, that's $150,000. And it's just natural for people to think, you know, how many years did it take? How many decades did it take to save your first $150,000, right? Saving, saving that first $100,000 is really, really hard. And so what I have found as a financial advisor for over 20 years is, is people think in increments of 100,000 and say, you know, I was working 15 years or whatever the number is to make $100,000 and I just lost that in a month in the stock market. I mean, you look at, uh, at the start of COVID, the, the S&P 500, it was, it was one of, if not the quickest drop in the stock market uh, since the Great Depression, or even including the Great Depression, it was 30% uh, in a, about one month. I mean, it was staggering how quickly uh, the market fell. And you could easily make the case and say, this is going to be really, really bad, right? I mean, instantly, the amount of people that lost their job just skyrocketed. If you look at the unemployment data, if you look at any chart, it just goes off the chart, right? We had never seen something like that before. Um, and so it's very easy to get scared, but where, where people succeed in, in these difficult periods is when you can stay the course. Now, one, one tip, one thing that, that can help some people out, it helps me, I do this in my personal portfolio, is I have about 10% of my portfolio in cash. And you know what? Over a decade, over an investment cycle, that hurts me but I have that money there. So in times like COVID, in times like the financial crisis, 2008, 2009, when the market goes down, I have cash that I can buy something at a discount price. And, and even though I know over a decade, I'm behind the curve, I'd probably be better off with that money just being part of my normal allocation. I do it for my mental strength and fortitude during scary times. Being able to buy something on sale makes me feel less scary. It makes me feel opportunistic, like, oh, I can take advantage of that. So it's not for everybody, but I'll close the video by sharing that. And I'll also encourage you to watch this video up here where I talk about the average income for retirees in America. And this video down here that talks about five reasons to retire as soon as you can.